Hey everybody, Steve Basic from The Build Show. We're out here at Martha's Vineyard. We're in our passive house project out there. And today's topic, double wall framing. So you can see behind me here, is basically we have the exterior wall all framed up. A couple things to note. Notice we have the two by six exterior wall framed 24 inches on center. And then we have a two by four wall framed 24 inches on center. And there's a three inch space in between those walls. That three inch space thermally breaks the inside wall from the outside wall by allowing the dense pack cellulose to get packed in between the two wall frames. So basically we have that clear line of insulation. Now, when you get to windows, we obviously can't leave that open. So we oversize the rough opening by an inch and then we line it with the same zip sheathing that we use on the outside. So think of it as almost like wrapping the opening, right? Obviously this is gonna go away when the window comes, but we have that exterior sheathing comes up to the window rough opening and basically turns the corner and folds in all of the windows. So we get that continuity of our air barrier, but more importantly, we get the closure on that three inch cavity there to keep that dense packed cellulose within the wall system. And then we get that nice big open uh, window box there to set our windows in and flash it to it properly. So let's jump back to the studio We'll have a long talk about our value, double walls, and all of that good stuff. We'll bring out some of the details, and we'll get right into it. Our good friend Big Red, I'm sure, will show up and help us out with some explanation. I'll see you back at the studio. Hey, everybody. We're back here at the studio. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed the trip out to uh, Martha's Vineyard with me and got to walk around and see that double stud wall. I mean, it's pretty standard framing, just... Uh, one wall is good, two is better in this case. So I broke out a building section here. Let's talk a little bit about double stud walls, why we do them, and uh, all the good stuff around it. So let's look into the details. Of course, you know who's with me? Big Red. All right, let's take a look. All right, so you can see I broke out one of the building sections from our Martha's Vineyard Passive House. You can see here, there's that double stud wall. This one obviously isn't where we're standing in the video because that one had a big window there. But basically, what we're talking here is this is a 2x6, 24 inch on the center wall. And this is a 2x4, 24 inch on the center wall. And then we have the uh, what's that? Five, eight, nine, three inch space. So overall, we basically have a twelve inch wall. If we take our blown cellulose and we multiply that by the twelve inch wall, we get roughly our forty six ish. So, not a bad wall system, but there's a couple of things that are even more important than just the fact that we have that thermal value. Because in a traditional wall, right, where you have a single stud, then we put the plywood on the outside. Well, we might have insulation in here, but you have this opaque area which is the framing. And that opaque area allows for this concept of thermal bridging, or just provides kind of a raceway for heat loss, right? Because that wood becomes a really good conductor and there's nothing to resist that thermal movement, right? And that's what insulation does. It's basically a resistor. So we don't have that much thermal resistance in that stud. So for, say, anywhere from 15 to 20, 22% in a standard house, 
your wall is roughly R5 at best um, with a 2x6 wall. But here, not only do we have the R46, but we have that 3-inch airspace in between, right? So we don't get that thermal connectivity that we have there, right? It just doesn't happen because nothing on the inside touches anything on the outside except for, you know, down here at the uh, floor sheathing and up here at our detail. But overall, we basically have the outside wall, a space, and then the inside wall. And that works really, really well because not only, like I said, do we get that R46, but that thermal break plays a huge role in that R value because in that 15 to 22 percent where we lose the battle in their traditional wall system, we get that back here because we're thermally broken there. So even in that little three inches, right, we're at roughly maybe R11. And then we have the, the framing members, which are maybe four, five, and maybe three and a half. So another eight and a half. So we're, we're at roughly R19 or so where the framing members are. But breaking that is a world of difference. The other thing that I've come to realize, I've, I've done a handful of houses with double stud walls. Um, there's a lot of good reasons to do it. One, Framers like it because all they're really doing is building the wall twice with a smaller wall inside. So there's not a whole lot of magic behind what we're doing here. Um, two, because it's a double stud wall, you have the ability to move that distance, that three inches. You can go up or down, right? We can make that two inches. We can make it five inches. And, you know, if you're designing for a passive house, you might find out when you run it through the uh, passive passive house calculator that, okay, maybe it didn't quite make it, and then we end up moving that wall in an inch. Well, it doesn't really change a whole lot. It changes a little on the inside, but as far as the wall construction and that, it's virtually the same. The other thing that I found is that's pretty interesting is inside that three-inch space, I've actually done, um, you know, where you, you have the studs, and these are the two by six studs on the outside, but I've actually done lateral bracing on the inside of that two by six wall because we have that three inches and uh, we did a couple houses out on the seacoast and the structural engineer used that space to our advantage in putting this two by six lateral brace and we just screwed that a couple times into each of those studs but that actually added to the lateral bracing of the wall and it eliminated the need for a whole bunch of metal connectors and such because we were able to take on some additional lateral load using that brace but anyways that's the double stud wall and in the video I talked about it, I don't have the uh, drawing here of the window, but as far as the sheathing goes, right, we have that sheathing running all around the building, and man, it would be nice if we didn't have to put puncture holes in it, but it wouldn't be that great of a house if we couldn't see out, I guess. So, when we punch those holes in and we get that window in here, then all I do is we take that sheathing and we wrap it all four sides. So now, we're basically placing our window inside of our air barrier. So we get really good continuity in our air barrier system by turning that um, zip system, in this case, to the inside of that opening on all four sides of that window opening, um, the sill, the head, and both jams. And then that gives us the ability to now come in and put that window in here and have something to attach to it that is easily attached to our um, primary air barrier, which in this case is the zip sheathing on the outside of the wall. So it makes for a really easy, really good system. Um, it can, you know, get you higher R values depending on what you 
spray or um, blow inside there. Um, and like I said, you can make that thicker. So if you're in, you know, climate zone seven, then maybe this isn't 12 inches. This is more like 16 inches. Um, the one thing to understand about it, though, is the thicker you make the wall, right, if we make that thicker, less energy is getting to the face of that exterior sheathing, right? When we look back and we see the two by six wall, one of the reasons this wall succeeds is energy gets to that interior sheathing pretty quick. So it keeps it pretty warm. Now, that's inefficiency to the house, but it provides a higher level of durability to the wall. So we have to make sure that we get this sheathing and we can get, you know, we're not getting condensation on the inside. So we really have to pay attention to what, you know, our RH in here, what's our ventilation rate, all this good stuff in there. So that, those are all part of the equation. But the thicker we make that wall, and it's inversely proportional, or it's proportional to the thicker I make that wall means the colder this wall is going to get. Because if I'm making a thicker wall, I'm making it for predominantly a colder climate. So I'm even at a higher risk out here, right? It's kind of like double jeopardy. But uh, so you have to pay attention to that too. But anyways, that's the double stud wall out at Martha's Vineyard. All right, everybody. That is a wrap. Hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you haven't uh, gone back and checked out some of the other videos we have out there, Please do. We get over a year's worth of content. Um, you know, after you watch all of mine for five or six times, then I suggest you go and watch uh, Matt, Jake, Brent, and Wade. They're all giving great great content. I watch them all. So, a bunch of great guys out there giving up some great information. So, if you're looking for more, you can always find me on Instagram, Steve Basic Architect. Um, you can find my daughter on Instagram also, Alexandra Basic. Um, and uh, last but not least, you can find me every other week on the Unbuilded Podcast, where my good friends Peter Yost and Jake Bruton, we team up and we talk about building science and uh, we unbuild some of the complexities of build science. So check it all out. But until next time, long live our buildings. <laughs>